Hello, Leo viewers. So I'm going to go ahead and look into your situation. I'm going to see what's going on with your love life. This could be an ex, could be a new person coming in. We'll just see how the cards play out. So let's see. The last Leo reading I did, I think I was getting that there was somebody that was trying to come forward with their feelings. They were kind of struggling. They were a little shy and secure. They were having some hesitation but they they were wanting to make some kind of love offer to you they they were wanting to come forward and it's a it's 111 right now so i mean some synchronicity to that also anyway let's see what's going on with your situation could be an ex could be a new person coming in we'll just see how the cards play out so for the leos that are watching this what do i need to know about your love life right now what's the story here that we're gonna tell Okay. Yeah, so it looks like pretty good energy, actually. The Four of Cups, the Three of Swords. So you're coming out of that. It's like a period of isolation or just boredom, loneliness, but you're coming out of that. So that's good. The Four of Cups, the Three of Swords reversed, the Eight of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles, the Moon, Temperance, Knight of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. So I think somebody's trying to take it slow, either you or your person. Somebody, they do have feelings. They're probably not letting you know just how strong their feelings are right now, though, because they're trying to find a good balance. It's like they are with the Nine of Pentacles here. It's like they are coming forward, but they're not fully expressing what they feel right now. They're just, and it might not be a bad thing. They might just be trying to do this right, trying to take it slow, um, they might be damaged and afraid of getting hurt, and so they just they don't want to lay it all on the table right away. They don't want to scare you off either, which I'm sure might be part of it. You know what I mean? Because there's you know a lot of, in a lot of relationships there's that kind of runner chaser dynamic where it's like one person's always giving a little bit more than the other one is. So I think they they want to have a balance with that. They want to make sure it's a, a mutual give and take in this relationship. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody was even playing the victim in this relationship in the past. Because I'm looking at the Four of Cups and the Three of Swords here. It's almost like maybe stagnation or boredom or like loneliness, pain. Um, but with the Three of Swords reversed, it's like somebody's coming out of that. Like they're not crying about it anymore. So I almost wonder if this connection. It's almost like one or both of you started looking at it from a more mature, higher perspective. Where it's like you guys kind of stopped blaming each other and you started communicating better is kind of is what I'm getting from this reading. Or if this is someone that you are waiting for to come around, it's like you kind of started realizing that you need to live your life and hold space for them, but not give them everything. Basically, you know, you just there's some sort of higher perspective here that's helping shift this relationship into a better place, this connection or whatever this is, this situation. You know, I know the, the traditional Four of Pentacles meaning is is a financial obsession, greed, you know, money. But whenever I see this card, I'm always drawn to intuitively interpret the woman on the card. Just see how, how bored she looks. It's like she's just waiting. And with the Eight of Pentacles, I almost feel like one or both of you kind of did get bored. You either got bored with the relationship or you got bored of like waiting for them to get it together or waiting for them to come back around. You just, it was kind of just this, it's like you were upset, but it was more like a stagnation than anything. It's just kind of like you're just, it's things were so stale. Um, with the Eight of Pentacles though, it's like something shifted though. Something shifting really in a really positive light in this connection. With the Eight of Pentacles, feel like you're being more patient you're being more perseverant you're seeing things from a higher perspective they might also be one or both of you are seeing things from a higher perspective and and putting in the time and effort to make this relationship work if this was a connection that was very hot and cold in the past like a lot of ghosting or are they maybe it was really passionate but there was arguments or it was like just up and 
down just a roller coaster with them. They want more of a balance in this connection now. They want it to be more stable and solid. You know, I think that they are thinking long term with you. Um, but it's like more of like a familiar calm energy. It's not like a it's not like a strong passionate energy. I mean, there's like new love here. There are good feelings here, but it's like they want they just want stability with you. I just get a strong sense of a oh, desire for stability from your person in this reading. You know, consistent communication um, on both ends. The temperance card here, it's, it's all about balance. It's about being patient. It's, it's about finding the middle ground with your person, you know, making those compromises. Yeah, so your person is seeking truth and harmony and balance in this connection. It's like the Knight of Pentacles. They're they're coming forward um, with their feelings for you, with their you know the, their desire for this relationship. I feel I do feel a very long term energy here. It's not like a. I feel like maybe it's been hot and cold in the past, or maybe it was one sided in the past, or there was just something off in the past. But I'm getting that that you guys are kind of on the same page now. Maybe still working th some things out, still might be some communication issues here and there. But for the most part, I think that you're both wanting long-term with each other. Um, I think that you're both on the same page with that. I think that you're both really wanting to work on communicating better, on being more open, just being more stable overall. There's just a very, there's just such an, in this reading for you guys, there's just such an emphasis on patience and um, stability and consistency. And you guys are using your intuition to find that balance. You know, you see the moon card here is looking at temperance, which is all about patience and balance and, you know, harmony, compromise. And the moon, um, it, you know, that's, that's intuition, that's dreams, uh, mystery, it could also be fears coming to the surface. But to me, it's, it's, it's basically saying that you guys are using your intuition and, and just seeing from this higher perspective to in order to try to find a, a healthy balance and communicate in, in healthier ways than you have in the past. It's important to keep the, I mean, you guys do need a balance in this relationship. I really do agree with that, but it's important not to let the romance die, though. If this person is coming back around and maybe you guys are trying to do things you know, and then, like from what I was saying, just just in a, a more balanced way, making compromises, that's good. And that's definitely positive. Um, but do try to have that balance and like, don't let the romance die. You know what I mean? Like have that balance of, of work and play. Like, yes, you guys have to work on this relationship when it comes back around. But and there are going to be past issues that need to be talked about. But you want to have fun, too. You want to keep the romance and that youthful kind of energy alive. So don't let that die. Because I see, because I'm, I'm looking at the Seven of Cups here. And this is somebody, well, it's choices to be made for one thing. But it's it's also about dreams, just like the moon. It's like this very dreamy, intuitive energy that you have here with the Seven of Cups. And, it's you know, you notice this woman, it's like she's... It's almost like this nostalgic energy. It's like he or she is longing for something. It's like this, this, like she's holding on to dreams or he's holding on to dreams. So I think it's kind of saying when it comes back around with the Knight of Pentacles, like this, this person coming in is going to be very loyal and stable and grounded. Um, you know, and you, you're, you do want to find that balance and you do want to see things from a whole soul level and a higher perspective on both ends, but Again, don't let the romance die. Don't let don't let it get to a point where where one of you has to question whether it's some kind of boredom. Like like are they bored with me? Are they why are they taking things so slow? Why are they not being honest with with their feelings? So It's almost, it's almost, it's, it's strange. It's almost like it's trying to say, don't let the desire to communicate in healthier, more balanced ways end up leading you guys to a lack of communication. You still, you both still need to express your feelings, you know, try to be patient with each other and, and have it come out in more stable ways. Yes, but make sure that you're not being quiet on issues that matter to you or make sure they're not being quiet on issues that matter to them. So I'm almost wondering if like this person is going to come back around and you guys are going to try to be stable, but then there's so much from the past that you need to talk about and there's like, there might be things that trigger one of you 
Um, it could be you or them. It's going to be, you know, depending on what your story is. It might be like little things that trigger trigger you guys. And you might be like, well, I want to communicate in healthier ways. I don't want to be dramatic. I don't want to, you know, hang on to this one thing they did, you know, months or years ago. And so you might end up kind of suppressing what you feel a little bit. So I think it's reminding you, it's like, don't let that happen. You you do want to make sure that you keep communicating your needs just in better ways. Just, you know, start, look up, look up communication courses, maybe just start with like, I feel that when you, like just very gentle, very loving, but very honest and open at the same time, not, not suppressing what you feel, but not being super dramatic about what you feel either. It's, it's finding that balance with your words, with the way you communicate. You do need to keep expressing everything that you feel and every issue that you feel come up, but you need to do it in a more balanced, gentle, kind of open way, if that makes sense, that it's it's taken better. Because, you know, body language comes into that. The way that you communicate, like your body language, your tone, all of that can trigger to somebody just being defensive and not hearing anything that you say and somebody being completely open and hearing everything you say. You know what I mean? Like you can say the same thing in two different ways and one way they're going to take it as you're angry and you're cold and you're closed off and the other way they're going to see the pain behind it and they're going to be open and, and actually hear you. So, so yeah, just balance with communication. You know, don't let things become boring. Make sure you guys still have some fun in this relationship. Make sure it doesn't just become all about working through the issues from the past. Um, and don't let somebody get bored. Don't let somebody feel like... It's like you guys want to take things slow, but someone almost might get hurt about you guys taking things slow, if that makes sense. Like we, he, he or she might, or you might. In the end, it's like you want to take things slow, but some of you might be like, well, huh. like why I didn't why are we waiting to have sex or why are we waiting to do this or why are we waiting to do that you know so so don't take it don't take that personally i think that you guys are just you're this person's trying to come in more stable i think if there's somebody that hurt you in the past too it does make sense that the sense that they're trying to come in more stable they know that they can't come in and half-ass that they know that they would really have to um if this is somebody that you you dated they know that they have to put a lot of time and effort into communicating better and you know keeping things good between you guys and, and just keeping things flowing so let me see what else can you tell me about this relationship this connection what do i need to what do i need to know better for this reading Okay, it looks pretty good. So we have differences, risk, confidence, focus, obedience, the warrior, and fulfillment. See, with the differences in risk, they do know that there's a risk here. So for some of you, I do feel like this is somebody that you have a history with that you were probably with for a while um, or that there is at least an on and off again history. They might have ghosted you or hurt you in the past, but there is something. There is, There are mutual feelings here because I do sense you guys talking about past issues, so there must be something from the past. So I don't feel like... I don't really get the sense that this is a new person unless you have a history just like that, like you have that deep of a connection that you already have a history with them. But um, for most of you, I feel like this is actually somebody that you've known for a while. With differences in risk, I think that your person knows that there are communication issues in the past. I think that they know that there are personality differences or religious differences, just little things here and there that are different. And they know it's a risk. They know that they could get hurt. They know that this relationship, you know, could end up not working out. They know that you guys might end up fighting again or miscommunicating or being silent or distant from each other again. They, they just, they know it's a risk. They know that there could definitely be pain here in the end for them. You know, part of them being... 
part of them taking things slowly. I do think it is them just wanting the relationship to go more smoothly. Um, maybe they even have commitment issues and they tend to run. So they're wanting to not go too fast so that they can actually have like this stable footing where they feel like they have a good enough balance where the relationship doesn't overwhelm them and freak them out. Um, for some of you. But I, I'm also wondering if... So I'm looking at this. They're coming in with, they're coming in as the warrior. So this is kind of like the knight energy that we got from the last spread. And somebody, and this could be male or female. It's whatever your story is. You know, these, these could be female, female relationships, male, male relationships, male, female. It's whatever your story is. So don't get too caught up on the wording. But with the warrior here, it's like somebody is coming in and they're coming in strong. They're coming in secure. You know, the pentacles energy, it's very stable and grounded and mature and um balanced and with the warrior here they're coming in strong they're coming in with a real offer but it's not the kind of offer you would get from a king of cups or a king of wands it's not like that passionate fiery love offer it's more an offer of stability of commitment of let's learn to communicate better let's let's um get couples counseling let's uh let's go let's go hang out together and and talk and catch up and see where we're both at let's get to know each other on a deeper level and see if we can have something stable in this connection let's let's see what this could mean so um, i'm almost wondering if for some of you they they have been hurt either by you or somebody else other people in the past and because they're coming in with obedience and the warrior. So with obedience, you see that somebody who's kind of blindfolding themselves. It almost reminds me, in this particular spread, it almost like makes me think of somebody that's just not giving their everything just yet because they're afraid of getting hurt, you know, because like we see with the differences in the risk card here, this person is aware that this connection could lead in pain, you know. They're, they're aware that they're taking a risk with you. So whether that's just what they've been through personally or whether it actually says something about, you know, your connection, maybe they got hurt by you before, um, whatever it is, they just, they do see you as a risk. They do see you as someone who could really hurt them, someone who could really damage them. They're trying to focus on confidence here. They're trying to just, they're trying to push past that. And they are pushing past that. They're trying to be confident. They're trying to be healthier and more stable than they've been in the past. They're really trying to heal their insecurities as much as they can. They're they're trying to just focus in and just keep up that confident energy. They're trying to stay positive. They're trying to tell themselves, they're trying to, I hope they're not ignoring their insecurities because those do need to be dealt with, but it's almost like they kind of do ignore their insecurities. They're like, something comes up and they're just kind of like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to have faith in this. I'm going to try this. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to be confident in this connection. I'm going to be confident in this person. I'm, I'm not going to get scared about, you know, them hurting me or cheating on me or leaving me or ghosting me or whatever else. I'm, I'm going to try to focus on the present moment. I'm going to try to, they're not even trying to, I mean, they're kind of thinking about the future and I think that you guys do really have a past, but I think they're trying not to think about your past right now. I think they're trying to just stay grounded in the, in the present moment and just really take things day by day, which I think in the past probably has been hard for them to do. I think they've kind of like been living in the, the, past or the future and now they're just trying to be in the present moment they're just trying to focus their energy on just being confident and being grounded and stable and consistent and strong for you for this connection but um yeah like i was saying with the obedience card and the warrior card though you know, again it's about balance there's a strong emphasis on balance but i notice her blinds blindfolding herself and I, i'm always intuitively drawn to read these cards so i always look at the pictures and in this case, I kind of feel like it's your person kind of blindfolding themselves to their insecurities, to um, things from the past. It's almost like they're just, how do I explain that energy? It's almost like they're trying to stay so grounded in the present moment that it's not healthy. Like they're not allowing themselves to see the darkness and the negativity or the, the things that need to be addressed. Like they're trying so hard to be positive and consistent and confident and their intentions are good. Like there, there is this really healthy, deep ground, deep base that you guys both have of wanting this healthy communication and this this stable relationship. So you guys are good. You got you know you, it, it it is, 
it is good energy overall. Like you guys do have that foundation where you both want that stability in this relationship. So I think that will eventually, even if it's a messy process, I feel like eventually that will come out on both ends where it's like you guys figure out how to communicate and how to do this, you know, how to make this work, basically. But but yeah, with obedience and, and the warrior right next to it, I, I just almost feel like something's not see someone's not seeing everything clearly. Someone's only focusing on the the present moment, which is healthy. It is good overall, but you still have to kind of address the past and the future as well to some extent, at least a little bit, you know, not get caught up in it. It's better to stay in the present, but you, that's, that stuff still affects you. Your past is going to affect you. Your future is going to affect you. Your goals are going to affect you. It's almost like they just need to take that blindfold off and see everything around them, see the entire picture, the good and the bad, find that balance and you know, stay grounded in the present moment, but still acknowledge the past and acknowledge the future and, and still have the heart to heart honest talks when necessary, but just, you know, in a, in a way that's not destructive or doesn't lead to hurt feelings or ghosting or whatever. Um, but still acknowledging the past and acknowledging what needs to change in the future in this connection. So I think your person is coming in but I don't feel like they're coming in giving their entire heart yet. I do feel like you have it for the most part. Like I do feel like they're like you're their person and they feel that. And they do know that there's fulfillment here. You know, they, they know this is love. They know this is it's also talking about romance and what you need to you know, you need to keep that in your relationship. You need to keep that romance. Even if you haven't seen each other for a long time, you need to make sure that doesn't die. You need to make sure that there's that that, you know, again, just this card this reading is just all about balance, about finding a good balance. Romantic, fun but also serious and stable when need be, you know, having the honest talks, but in a way that's where you're open, but you're also, you're expressing yourself, but you're not doing it in a way that comes off as angry or cold. So there's this balance in all aspects, but, but yeah, there's fulfillment. They know that you're their person. They know they love you. They know they want this. Um, and they might just be coming in in a way that might seem, well, not, not cold. It shouldn't seem cold or mean, but their heart is guarded. I do feel like they're hurt. So they could be going, this could be a breakup that they've been through recently. This could be, again, you guys, you know, maybe hurt each other in the past or just what they've been through in general. But it's like they're coming in as the warrior, but they're coming in with this very obedient, stable energy. And and part of it, I mean, it is, again, like I said, it, it is a desire for a stable relationship on both ends. So it's not, a, it's not really necessarily a bad thing. But part of it is also their Fear, I think. Fear of, you know, they, they know there's some differences here and they know that this is a risk. They know that this could lead to pain. They know this could not, you know, they have this idea of what they want with you, but they, they know that that might not end up happening. Um, so there is this fear that they're, they're coming in with. So they might, they might be taking things very slow. They might, one person might be holding off on sex for a little bit. Um, Or they might, they just, they're just, there's just like this sense of them being kind of guarded. Like they're just internally, like they feel that vulnerability with you. I feel like they feel that connection, but they're, they're trying to be very logical right now. They're trying to interpret everything. They're really, I think, paying attention to how you two communicate, how, how you guys work together, how you guys just find that common ground that you both want. They have this fear of saying or doing too much. So they're, they're sort of just holding back a little bit and just observing you right now and observing the connection and just taking notes on probably little things that you wouldn't even think about, like body language or mannerisms, the way you dress, the way they dress, uh, you know, the pros and cons of the connection, what makes them feel safe, what makes them not feel safe, just just little notes here and there. So, so yeah, they are coming in with fear. It's again, it's a mix of fear of getting hurt, fear of, you know, this could be being rejected. This could be coming on too strong and scaring you away. This could be fear of just, um, you know, going back to old patterns from the past. Maybe you guys used to communicate in a way that wasn't great and they might be afraid of going back to those patterns in the connection where it's like you guys aren't understanding each other properly. Um, just just general fear of, of loss, of, of getting hurt, of not being heard and, and loved and understood. Just basic 
empathetic concepts of just, you know, wanting to be loved, wanting to be understood, wanting to be seen and heard, um, wanting that safety, that security. Um, so there's, there's that, there's that fear. And then on top of it, there's also just, you know, the genuine desire for this to be more stable and, and, and healthier and, um, and just, you know, better communication skills on both ends. I think since they know that there's such a huge risk here, they're kind of just, they're open to you. I mean, they're, I'm not saying they're not open to you, but it's almost like somebody who's just getting to know somebody all over again. You know what I mean? Like they're still, they're not just diving in and, 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 you know, telling themselves that everything's perfect and it's going to be all fine or whatever. They're, they're, they're taking the time and the effort to, to get to know you again. Um, to be more sp supportive and consistent this time around. And I think that their feelings for you are deeper than they're going to let on right away. But again, I, I just sense them being kind of guarded. Like if you guys hang out or if you guys are talking, it's like they're they're gonna they're gonna be on themselves to not say too much. It's almost like they're gonna like try to be the first one to end the conversation or they're gonna they're gonna be very mindful about like not drunk texting or not saying too much when they talk to you or just kind of limiting themselves and just being logical and kind of seeing things from a detached perspective. But it's not, again, it's not bad. It's like they're just, they just have this fear and they know that they want to take that risk. But before they, you know, completely open their heart to you and show you that vulnerable side of them and just tell you everything they've been feeling, they're going to try to just kind of be neutral and, and kind of just observe for a little bit and see what what's up with this connection basically so it's good though you know they they are i do feel them coming in i do feel them i feel like maybe they in the past they had to make a decision about whether they wanted this connection or not like maybe it was just too much um for them in the past like it was too much of a like just a struggle with you guys or just the things that they had been through would really require them doing a lot of inner work that they didn't want to do um, just that kind of energy. So I think in the past they might have been like contemplating, like, do they want this? Like, is this, because they know it's going to be work, you know, they're coming in knowing that it's probably going to be, um, that it's going to require some effort, you know, but, but they've made that, I think they've made that decision that that's, it's worth it to them. I think they're coming in knowing that you're worth it to them. But again, they might be coming, like they might be, you know, messaging and saying, hi, Hey, how's your day? But kind of keeping the conversations light and not really showing the romantic vulnerable side to you for a while, but, it, but still coming in. So it's, it's good. And they've still, they still know that they want you. They've made that decision that they do want you. So that's, it's, it's good. Any final messages? I guess I'll just take all those ones that just like jumped. Oh my God, that's too many. Okay. never mind. I'm not going to take all those. I'm going to take the first couple first. Okay. Four. Take four of those. <laughs> Five. All right. That's good. It's <laughs> <That's> enough. <laughs> Yeah, see, hidden desires here, secrets, fear of rejection, shy secret admirer, someone hiding their feelings for a little bit. So this is probably a soulmate, probably somebody, you, know, you do have multiple soulmates, but this is, yeah, this is one of those soulmates. You might be connecting with your gods and goddesses right now. That's usually what this deity card that comes out means. It's being loved and supported by the gods and goddesses. It's a reminder to, to show them gratitude, to talk to them, to give them offerings when necessary, when you, you know, feel called to it. Um, it's just kind of also just a reminder to go into the astral realm and, and connect with your guides and ask for help with these situations and, and have these relationships, these give and take relationships with your deities. So with cut and clear and deception here, I think it's just pretty much saying just about the same thing that that last reading was saying, you know, this is cutting yourself free from, I think they're doing like a, like a makeover of their life. You know what I mean? Like they... They want healthier relationships. They don't want to be, they don't want the same situations that they've been in before. They're not willing to go back to those situations. Um, could be healing childhood wounds, subconscious patterns. But this is, this is also just cutting and clearing 
not just the things that no longer serve them, but, but with your connection, it's kind of like if there was lies, gossip, just negative intentions, games, miscommunication, just some type of deception or unwanted energy, they're, they're trying to cut and clear from that and forgive it. You know what I mean? They're trying to to heal from that, to let that go, to, to start over in their life, whether it's starting over with you or it's just starting over in general. They're trying to let their past go and to heal from all they've been through and to be a more mature person. With Mermaid Soul here, this is lust and seduction, so they are seeing you in a more seductive light. They do have those romantic, lusty feelings for you. You know, they, they could be dreaming of you too. This is, I think... This usually means lucid dreaming and telepathic dreaming communication. That could totally be it too. But intuitively, I'm kind of led to, to read this quote that I put right here. I'm dreaming of you too, which is almost like, like when they go home at night, it's like they're thinking about you. Like they're dreaming about you. They're missing you. They're wanting to hold you and touch you. They're just not saying it. Like they're feeling it. They're just not saying it. And this, you know, it says, my home is with you. This is an offer of love, of commitment. This is mutual love. This is someone, that, uh, probably one of your soulmates. But again, they're just, they feel this love. They feel this seduction. They feel this, this just close energy with you. They feel that you're, you know, this, this feeling of being at home with you. With hidden desires here, it's like they're keeping that secret. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of of the of past issues coming up they're afraid of pain again so they're kind of hiding their feelings for a little bit so it's going to take some patience as long as they're treating you well and they're being consistent and you guys are actually able to see each other then be patient with them too as long as they are making an effort to be in your life and not making excuses and not telling you you have to wait or telling you you have to do this or that like as long as they are making an effort to be in your life but just wanting to take things slow then i think you guys are good just um yeah, should be mutual energy exchange. All right, anyway, thank you guys for watching my video. And if this resonates, please go ahead and subscribe.